Hello friends and family, YouTube, Facebook, whomever. Uh, this is Clint from Texas here just to make another video. In my wildlife series I made a video on Vespula squamosa, which is yellow jacket. And I wanted to document a yellow jacket sting so you could see what it looks like. So if you look at my arm here, you can see and hopefully that will pick up in the picture. That big red blotch on my arm is where I've been stung. There's a mild case of anaphylaxis. I'll see if I can get in close. I don't know whether the camera will actually show a good picture or not, but we'll just take a shot. Now one of the things I wanted to show you is what to happen if you were to go into anaphylactic shock. Anaphylactic shock is where your body starts reacting negatively to a sting or to exposure to some sort of antigen. One of the things, especially for bee stings, wasp stings, scorpions, things of that nature, is what we call an EpiPen. Of course, there's a lot of controversy about the EpiPen. I think this one cost me $150, and somehow or another they've gone up to $1,500. This is what one looks like. I would take it out and show you exactly, except for the fact that I might accidentally inject myself with this. It is actually a syringe, and it has an auto-dosed injectable amount of uh, epinephrine. It is not... An anti-venom, all it is, is a rescue device to help you make it to a hospital to receive professional treatment from a licensed physician. Now, another thing that I keep in my adventure pack that you see here, which is full of all sorts of rescue equipment and survival gear and things that you need to get by, especially out in the wilderness, I have is this bite and sting kit and it has extractors for removing venom should you get bitten by a venomous serpent or something of that nature god forbid I have a snake bite kit now these are generally considered useless by most venomologists you have to be very careful not to use this incorrectly if you use a tourniquet and you actually shut off blood flow you, you can cause venom not to dilute and you can possibly lose a limb so you have to be very careful when you use the tourniquet on these type devices you should use them only under advisement by a physician I would say uh, one thing that I keep of course is calamine lotion which is really good if you get into poison ivy poison oak poison sumac things of that nature a few applicators to uh, apply to the site now you can put calamine lotion on a bee sting. It's not going to do a whole lot other than maybe soothe. It might dry out a little bit of the surface uh, venom, but actually it's more for taking oils off of your skin, such as uh, with poison ivy, poison sumac, poison oak, things of that nature. At any rate, uh, the EpiPen is actually used. You can use it with your clothes on. I'll try to demonstrate. Uh, you of course would take it out of the container but it actually you just shove it up against your leg like that and it introduces a dose of epinephrine intramuscularly and that will help dilate the airways and blood vessels in your body that of course are responding if you go into a situation of anaphylactic shock now <clears throat> I've been in anaphylactic shock before and it really is an unusual experience and I'll share mine with you for the purpose of helping you understand. Now, I'm not trying to dispense medical advice, all I'm trying to do is share this experience so you can know if you're going into anaphylactic shock. On my arm you see a mild case of anaphylaxis where you just have local swelling. But anaphylactic shock is where your body goes into complete shock where you start itching from head to toe. You literally feel like you're on fire from within. It feels like there are ants crawling underneath your skin. Where you're really going to feel it is where you sweat. Between your fingers, these little little areas between your fingers, that's where you're going to feel it really. You'll feel it in your armpits, you'll feel it in your elbows, the, the creases of your arms and on the back side of your legs, you know, where your legs fold, anywhere where there's a lot of sweat gland activity, you will feel this insane itching. There's going to be a temptation to scratch. That's a temptation you must resist. You must not scratch. Literally, you will want to take a wire brush and just start scratching yourself from head to toe, but you must not do that. Because once you do that, you start a chain reaction of anaphylaxis throughout your body. And you really open up 
the the floodgates to a, a reaction so you must resist as much as possible the temptation to scratch if you find yourself scratching excessively after an insect sting a bite or something uh, exposure to some unusual chemical or plant you may need to go and seek treatment for anaphylactic shock I can tell you that what happens is once you start going into shock you begin to swell not only at the site of you know of uh, exposure but you also begin to swell around your lips your tongues you can begin to have difficulty breathing uh, you can begin to experience um, um, disorientation you will be losing your train of thought very easily you might be focusing on trying to do something and all of a sudden like for example I went to the hospital when I went into anaphylactic shock I get all the way to the emergency room parking lot and then all of a sudden I can't remember why I'm at the hospital you know my lips were swelling my eyes were swelling I couldn't see where I was going everything was darkening down because I was so swelling up and at the same time my mind was going into this mental fog and I couldn't remember why I was at the hospital now that's when you're really 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 in trouble fortunately I pulled myself out I had a brief moment of clarity I said I now remember why I'm here. I'm here because I got stung. I ran in there. They immediately began treatment. It is a very, very lengthy and and very intricate treatment that they give you of anti-inflammatories and uh, antihistamines and painkillers and all sorts of medications to help calm all of the reactions that your body is having. At any rate, again, I'm not trying to dispense medical advice, but I am just trying to share my experience so that if you think that you have gone in or are going into anaphylactic shock or see someone who has, I would advise contacting 911 and then seeking immediately competent medical attention. And that's all I have to say.